The Wild West is surprisingly hard, while everyone was talking about how hard it was going to be to beat the Jester or Parasol zombie, no one talked about these annoying little birds. Seriously, like the seagulls from last episode, I would definitely beat this chicken in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I mean, just look at his neck, it looks flimsy as hell. Before we start the video, only 2% of you guys are subscribed. So subscribe because we are only at 653 subscribers, which is less than the population of Vatican City, which is somehow a country. Anyways, enough chit chat. So let's find out if we can beat Wild West with only catapults. Day one came with a pre-placed pea shooter on a minecart. We spammed the cabbage bowl and won the level. This day was in that hut, since it is the first level. Day 2 was a bit harder. I came across that one zombie that goes behind you. I don't remember his name. Also, there were bucket heads which were a bit inconvenient. We beat the level easily. Day 3 introduced the piano zombie, which wasn't that much of a problem since we just spammed cabbage pulse plant food to kill all the zombies, since they were all just basics and cone heads. Day 4 was a conveyor belt level, so here's a fact. Did you know mushrooms aren't even plants? That's right, PopCap has been lying to you. Therefore, the game name should be Plant Plus Mushrooms vs Zombies. On day 5, we got introduced to the Pancho Zombie, which I definitely didn't just search up what his name is, because I definitely didn't forget. We lost two lawnmowers because Cabbage Pot doesn't deal enough damage to these guys, since they have a chance to spawn with a metal grate which has the same toughness as a bucket head. It is fine though, as we still clear through the level. Day 6 was a last stand level, which you would think was really easy since it was a last stand level, but no. Just see how this went. This is actually so annoying. Wait. No way. No way. No way, bro. This buffoon went up here. That's right. The zombie just killed himself, which was just pure RNG. Day 7 brings back the poncho zombie, which honestly wasn't that big of a deal this level, and I don't really know why, since they were a struggle to deal with on day 5. Maybe because I spammed more kernel pots, or it could be the fact that there was more plant food given to me from killing zombies in this level, but I could be wrong. Day 8 was a conveyor belt level, so here's a fact. The catapult was used by the Greeks and Romans. The Romans did not invent the catapult, they only improved on the design developed by the Greeks in the 4th century BC. The first documented use of a catapult was in the 7th century BC by King Uzziah of Judah. So I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Day 9 didn't let us pick our plants. Even though I could use any plant for this level, I decided to only use Wintermelon because he is very overpowered. I beat the level first try only using him. When we unlock this guy, we might use him all the time, but the 500 sun cost will probably prevent us from using him. Chicken! This is gonna be such a pain, bro. Day 10 was really hard. This is because the chicken wrangler is introduced, which is probably our biggest nightmare. Because if you didn't already know, when you hit this zombie, it will spawn like 50 zombified chickens in three different lanes. And when your plant can only shoot like once in every 10 years, it becomes a problem. Since these guys move like they're the flash. At first, I tried the level only using cabbage and kernel pulp, which went as well as you would expect. After that, I rented sticky bomb rice, which is absolutely broken as you will see in the later levels but unfortunately it doesn't do well against chicken zombies after a few attempts with sticky bomb rice which i definitely got legitimately i decided to add another catapult to our roster the turkey pole which i definitely also got legitimately who fires green turkeys at the zombies he honestly isn't as powerful but he is our only counter to the chicken zombies as our turkeys one shot the chickens and can continue to destroy destroy them. I could have used the sling pea, but I don't know if that's catapulty enough to be classified as a catapult, so I might make a poll after this video. Even though we unlocked the turkey pole, it took me a few more attempts to beat this level, but 
we eventually pulled through. Day 11 was miles easier than the previous level, even if we are capped to only use a maximum of 500 sun. The plant Sticky Bomb Rice has to be one of the best plants in the game, since it can shoot in a total of 3 lanes, has splash damage, and can shoot backwards. Did I mention he stuns the zombie he hits? Day 12 was the conveyor belt level, so here's a fact. Chickens have better colour vision than us. Like humans, chickens have colour vision and are able to see red, green and blue light. However, what makes chicken vision unique from ours is that they are also able to see ultraviolet light, which are the colours you see when using a black light. Oh yeah, after this we unlocked the watermelon. Day 13 introduced the bull riding zombie. He isn't that bad to be honest, since we just spam sticky bomb rice. Day 14 sucked. Chicken zombie is annoying. I had to restart like 10 times. This day was probably just as bad or worse than day 10. I probably don't need to explain why this level sucked, so I'm not even going to bother explaining to you what happened. And that's why I wrote, so yeah. In contrast, day 15 only took a total of 1 minute and 44 seconds to beat. It was definitely because of the fact that Sticky Bomb Rice is currently our best plant and might be for the rest of the challenge. On day 16, we had to protect a walnut, which was easy enough because he's a walnut. Apart from that, we spam Sticky Bomb Rice and win. Day 17 was a bit harder. Wolf riding zombies were annoying because they couldn't trample the flowers, otherwise we would lose. My question is, why does Crazy Dave have flowers in the middle of some random desert in the past? I mean, I guess they don't call him Crazy Dave for no reason. This level only took a couple attempts to beat. Day 18 actually looked impossible. I can't lie, there were so many chicken zombies. However, the melon pole and turkey pole combo was actually crazy good. So it only took me like 3 attempts to beat this last stand level. Day 19 was more sticky bomb rice spam. So this level went by pretty fast. Day 20 is a conveyor belt level so here's a fact did you know watermelon is made of 90 percent water day 21 was a bit harder because of these annoying flowers but after a few attempts we succeeded day 22 doesn't let us pick our plants so here's a fact did you know chickens are capable of dreaming that's right Chickens demonstrate REM, rapid eye movement, when sleeping, which means they are capable of dreaming, which I find pretty cool. Day 23 is our first impossible level. I spent like 5 hours trying to beat this level. We cannot do anything about the chicken zombies just running past the flowers. Even if I got the sapling, legitimately, to help with this, it doesn't really help. We'll skip past this level and try again later. Day 24 is our last actual level. We have to protect 3 walnuts from zombies. This level level was actually pretty easy as I beat it on the first try. The chicken zombies weren't even that bad to be honest. Day 25 is the boss level, which means this video is over. In conclusion, I thought this world was also pretty hard. Thank god that it is over and I don't have to deal with the chicken zombies next episode. Wait a second. The next world is Frostbite Caves. Who's that guy down there? Anyways, that's for me to worry about next episode. So subscribe to get notified of that and have a good day.